Okay. Uh, I'm going to call the uh, public hearing. Oh, uh, I'm going to call it open. Um, this is the meeting we have uh, for anyone from the general public to call in and ask questions they might have regarding the budget and warrant articles for the annual town meeting and special town meeting that is coming up on June 22nd and June 24th. Um, the finance committee has been reviewing the budget department budgets and warrant articles since January. So we may or may not have uh, many questions for the town manager at this time. Tonight is more of uh, a time to hear from the public. Um, how this will work, um, we're going to address each warrant article individually. Um, I'll check with uh, Jason Marshall if there's anyone from the public that would like to speak on the article. Um, anyone from the public that wants to speak will state their name and address for the record. Um, after that, I will open up, once the public is done, I will open up for the committee for questions. Um, after discussion is completed, the finance committee will vote on each, uh, vote on our recommendation on each article. Um, let's see. Uh, and I will, I'll share the warrant article on the screen, uh, but I doubt they'll be visible on the TV. So hopefully you can find, uh, hopefully you got mailed the warrant and you can follow along that way. Or you can go to the URL. I don't know if it's at the bottom of the screen or not, but go to the town website and it will be there. We'll be searching. Uh, let's see. So, having said that, I will look for a motion to waive the reading of the warrant documents. So move, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Second. I have a motion and a second. And oh, for all the votes, we will do a roll call vote. Um, Todd Johnson? Uh, aye. Uh, Tom? I can't hear you, Tom, but I, I saw your lips. <laughs> Still muted. There we go. Tom? I think we lost Tom. I don't see. Hi. Hi. There we go. Jason Marsh. Uh, Jason Christian. Sorry. Hi. <laughs> Uh, Susan, Bishop. Aye. Donna. Aye. Aye. Eve Asnavorian. Aye. And I will vote aye as well. Woo, that was easy. Um, I w also, um, I'd like to start with section three, um, so that, uh, Mr. Sadwick doesn't have to stick around for the whole, uh, more articles. We can just get section three out of the way, uh, at the start. I'll make a motion to move to section three for the start, Mr. Chairman. Okay, have a motion. Second. And a second. All right, roll call vote. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Cook. Aye. Mr. Christian. Aye. Uh, Ms. Bishop. Aye. Ms. Higgins. Aye. Jasavorian. Aye. And I vote aye as well. Okay, section three. Oh yeah, I was gonna share my screen, wasn't I? Hang on a sec. See if I can figure that one out. Uh, uh, share, share. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Just a suggestion for the people at home and those who are referring to their warrant that hopefully they receive. Could you give the page number that you're moving to? Sure. So we'll start with it's section three, article 27, page 36. Thank you. All right. I, uh, I'll give it to Steve to give us a, a rundown on this one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Um, article, th this introduction really is both for articles 27 and 28, but um, I just wanted to let the finance committee know a little bit about the background of this. The town last recodified its zoning bylaw back in 2002. And from 2002 until 2015, the planning board ran a zoning bylaw subcommittee. And during that period, we had about 131 amendments that came in, um, which had a lot of good things, well-intended um, amendments to the bylaw, inclusionary zoning, which had um, provisions for affordable housing, groundwater protection district was put in to protect the state hospital well fields. We had a wireless communications facility section of the bylaw. 
We had um, open space residential design, which was trying to preserve open space during subdivisions. Uh, in 2009, if everyone remembers when the economy was pretty rocky after, um, uh, during the beginning of the recession really, but the planning board started uh, working on overlays for Route 38, and it was kind of going back to the 2003 master plan. And so we had a number of overlays that were introduced on Route 38, which um, helped spark a lot of um, development on Route 38 or redevelopment. There was also uh, medical marijuana when that came along, it was amended into the bylaw. Large scale ground mounted solar facilities was amended into the bylaw. And then we also had broken up the heavy industrial district by um, taking two sections of town designated as heavy industrial one. So that all ran from, like I said, 2002 to 2015. In 2016, the selectmen established a zoning bylaw committee. And that zoning bylaw committee had a representative from the selectmen, planning board, the zoning enforcement officer for the town, and then two citizens at large. And currently, um, those citizens at large, one of them is a planning director in a nearby community, but she is a resident of Tewksbury. And we also had a land use consultant who has worked in a number of different communities, including um, Tewksbury. We hired consultants that came in and helped us, the three consultants that we had. Uh, one of them, Judy Barrett, was had worked on our 2003 master plan and our 2016 update to the master plan. And she's worked on a number of different um, zoning bylaws throughout the Commonwealth. Bob Mitchell, who um, served as the planning director in Amherst, Burlington, Vermont, worked in the state's um, office of Commonwealth Development and was also an adjunct professor at Amherst, um, was another member of that team. And then Bob Ritchie, who served as an assistant uh, attorney general and all of the zoning bylaws that are approved by municipalities went through his office for review. So whenever you hear that we're sending bylaws out to the attorney general's office, um, Mr. Ritchie, Attorney Ritchie was the one that was overseeing those reviews. So through this process, we had um, 35 public meetings over the course of those four years. Um, obviously, all the meetings were available and open for the public to come to participate um, and watch as the committee was working on the redraft of the zoning bylaw. There were two public input sessions that were specifically held. There was a public presentation on design review guidelines with the planning board. There was a joint presentation to the planning board and board of selectmen. And then there were two public presentations that were held this past December and three that were held this past January. So that kind of gives a context and the background as to how um, this all transpired over the course of the last couple of years. And I, right up front, I want to say that there's been talk about quarter acre and half acre zoning. And there was a lot of talk about that um, towards the end of this project. And it didn't show up in any of the drafts until draft eight, which was released in November of 2019. And then it was removed in draft 10 of the January 2020 release. So the article that is being presented at the town meeting does not have small lot zoning in it. There is no quarter acre or half acre zoning. And I have to continue to repeat this because some people believe that it's still in this article and that is not the case. And also, I just wanted to point out that in um, December of 2019, we had posted a side-by-side -side comparison of the existing zoning bylaw to the proposed zoning bylaw. That's about a 263 page document that resides on the zoning bylaw committee's page on the town website. So all of that work was um, done. And I think um, if possible, if I have the ability to yeah, share a screen, I, I just wanted to real quickly share some information. I wanted to show where um, that is on the, on the town website. 
All of the archive documents are up there on the website, the design guideline presentation, the um, final updated proposed zoning map, and then the public presentation. The ones that we ran in December and January, whenever we had public comments, those comments were captured and then answered and posted on the website. This side-by-side -side comparison um, with the final draft. And I just wanted to show you, so you'll see this is 264 pages. Everything on the left is the current bylaw. Everything on the right is the draft bylaw or the Article 27 and where they um, uh, correspond to each other. In some instances, there are no comparable clauses. There are some places where we've deleted um, sections in their entirety. And then there are also some um, places where there was no change. So I just wanted um, that to be shown. And then to kind of go through quickly a summary, Article 27, uh, the recodification, we addressed format and consistency update. So there was a reorganization of different sections. There was a renumbering because the current zoning bylaw operates on a 1000 coded system, which becomes very cumbersome over time as you're trying to um, update and amend the bylaw. If you're trying to share something right now, Steve, we don't, I'm not seeing it. Oh, you're not? No, I, you know, if you switch windows or something, maybe. Yep. There we go. You see that now? Yep. Thank you. Okay. Sorry about that. Thank you. Um, so we, we then updated and clarified the purpose and authority of the zoning bylaw. There was um, improved definitions to more clearly describe the zoning district's uses and requirements. And the current bylaw, there are a number of different areas that um, are not tied together. So everything in section five of the proposed zoning bylaw now talks about the definition of a zoning um, district. It talks about the uses and all of the requirements, whether it be the height, setbacks, all of that is in section five. All of the definitions were moved into one section. The current zoning bylaw has um, definitions that are in separate sections. There is a section 10,000, which is the definition section, but you can find definitions in the wireless section. You can find definitions um, in the uh, affordable housing section. So there was just a lot of definitions that were scattered throughout. And in some instances, they started to become inconsistent with other sections of the bylaw. Um, we also grouped like terms. And what I mean by that is uh, things such as um, adult uses has eight different definitions that fall into a grouping now. And those groupings in the definition section are highlighted to capture all of them. And the reason why this was done is because um, there are instances where if you were looking at the definitions from an alphabetical order, you would be bouncing around trying to find a hotel versus a motel. Now all of that is, sits in the lodging section of, of the definitions. Signs, we have um, 16 different definitions that relate to signs. Those are all grouped together now. Sometimes they begin with an S and other times they don't, but it's relative to signs. An example would be a billboard instead of that showing up in the Bs, it shows up under signs where it's alphabetically listed. So it was done to try and make things a little bit more easier, uh, user friendly. And there were a number of um, definitions that were amended or um, updated. And then there are some new definitions. Um, providing consistency with state law, you know, an example of that is, is that there's a three year um, duration for special permits was which was amended at the state level at one time we were operating with um, affecting that change in special permits that were being issued but it didn't show up in the zoning bylaw so it was really kind of a cleanup to make sure that it was consistent with state law there was a number of statutory references that were updated um, we did revise reorganize and clarify some of the administrative positions 
provisions, which include site plan review, which is something new that was added. So under the additions here, I've listed that uh, there was a strengthening of design guidelines in the town center district. Currently, the town has guidelines, but they do not reside in the zoning bylaws outside of the zoning bylaw. Again, I'd mentioned that we had a new definition. Site plan review is something that's used across the country to review plans and projects. It's something that we do not have in our zoning bylaw. And this um, proposed article would include site plan review for both special permits and for by right uses. We added in a request for reasonable accommodations to help the town um, come into compliance with the Federal Fair Housing Act, as well as the American with Disabilities Act. Um, we added recreational marijuana establishments, excluding retail, because if you remember, after the fall town meeting, the town chose to allow the bans on recreational marijuana to expire or sunset. So now we have no regulations, requirements, or locations where marijuana establishments can occur in town. So this proposed bylaw now addresses that issue. And then small cellular antennas outside of the town's right of way was something that emerged last April with an FCC ruling relative to 5G. And the selectmen swiftly acted to address um, cellular antennas that are inside the right of way with design guidelines and a whole process. But the zoning bylaw, as it currently stands, does not address this outside of the town's right of way. So this proposed article would address that issue. Revisions, I just want to um, point out that there was a reduction in the number of overlay districts from 11 down to four basic overlays now. Main Street zoning districts are in accordance with the 2004 master plan and 2016 update. In that update of the master plan, it laid out different character districts for Route 38. Currently, Route 38 is one zoning district from the Lowell line to the Wilmington line, and there is um, nothing that differentiates something up around 495 with down at South Main Street. So or South and Maine. So what we did was, was we broke it out according to a plan that was established in the master plan itself. We changed uh, parking stall requirements, and this was a recommendation that the town engineer had forwarded um, to the committee. Revised medical marijuana dispensary requirements um, by relaxing some of those requirements as relative to how many would be allowed. Again, our, our medical marijuana is a very small location on Route 38 but we only allow for one facility and it can only, um, it has to be 5,000 square feet or less and it has to be in a single use building. So um, we lift, the committee chose to lift those restrictions. Um, revised large scale ground mounted solar uh, photovoltaic facilities. Currently the bylaws a 20 acre requirement and it was reduced down to five acre requirement in article 27. Adjusted the billboard distance to residential uses. If um, people remember when this article or amendment came to town meeting, there was an amendment that wasn't in the original article to have billboards a thousand feet from a residential use or a residential district. And what the committee did was um, they reduced that to 500 feet from a residential use. There was a um, this bylaw that's being proposed under Article 27 mandates that there's 15% affordable housing in multifamily developments. I think everyone's aware that there have been multifamily developments that have occurred in town that were not building the units in the projects themselves, but were giving the town a fee in lieu of. This proposed bylaw mandates now that that affordable housing has to be in those multifamily developments. There was also added the timing of construction provision, affordable housing for mixed use projects, because what the planning board started to notice was in some of the mixed use projects, there was a concern that it made more economical sense for developers to get the housing up and as quickly as possible. So the planning board asked that there be a um, construction table for mixed use projects. 
Multifamily developments have been capped to seven units per acre, except in town center and mixed use business district. Currently, um, there's a number of overlays, um, five, I believe, that have no caps on the uh, density of multifamily units. So again, in the current bylaw, there is not a cap and it can exceed seven units per acre. What this bylaw would be doing would be capping multifamily de developments to seven units, except town center and mixed use business district. We removed the development impact section of the bylaw as it was covered under other sections of the, the bylaw, as well as um, other bylaws that the town has passed. That was put in back in 2002, and um, it's never really been used. And the town has since implemented the stormwater bylaw and a number of other um, mechanisms, including a robust departmental review of projects as they're coming in. So um, the committee chose to remove that section from the bylaw. They revised the special permit section of the bylaw. Right now, we have a very confusing, fragmented, three section special permit um, component to the bylaw. And what happened was, and again, being there back in 2002 when we last passed the bylaw, and part of those conversations was there was an attempt to move us to use special permits, which are um, typical in most other municipalities. And then Tewksbury had two additional things. One was what we call the use special permit, which had more features relative to a site plan review. And then we had the site plan special permit, which um, again had different requirements from that use special permit that I just mentioned. So the intent here was to really clean this up and say, special permit is for the use. And if it exceeds a certain size, it's going to require a site plan review. And then we updated um, the sign section of the bylaw. Again, there was a lot of um, conflicting and outdated information in the sign bylaw. And we also had a uh, review as far as the First Amendment and Supreme Court decisions were concerned. There was a recent, I say recent, it came out in 2015, 2016, Supreme Court decision on signs and content. And so our consultants made sure that our sign section of the bylaw was updated to reflect that Supreme Court decision. So that's um, that's pretty much Article 27. I apologize if uh, that was too much information or if I went too fast on that. No, that was good. Thank you. Um, so at this time, um, I'll ask if there's anybody on the phone from the public uh, that wants to comment or have any questions. No call. Okay. Um, so I'll open it up to the committee. Um, anybody have any questions? Hi, it's Donna. I do. <clears throat> Sorry. Go ahead, Donna. Well, all right. So I love some of the changes. I'm very happy with the bylaw, some of the bylaw changes. I have a question. The in lieu of payment, is that going to go away or is that going to still be available after the 15%? So the way that that's going to work, Donna, is um, again, like I said, for multifamily, they have to provide those affordable units in multifamily developments. The open space residential design, which is the subdivisions, um, which end up being the the purpose of those subdivisions really was to protect open space. But yep. the town at the time made a ten percent requirement on those subdivisions. So the fee in lieu of would remain for those types of subdivisions. It's an option. The planning board could make the developer provide the affordable housing in the subdivision. It gets into a larger theoretical um, conversation that um, it was actually taken up by the housing partnership uh, not too long ago, but in a subdivision where you have single family homes that are being built, and those single family homes are large single family homes mm -hmm. that are selling for seven, eight hundred thousand dollars. The question became, does it make sense to have a four hundred thousand dollar home sit in that neighborhood? What does that and I'm not taking a side in this at all. I'm just saying those were some of the discussions that occurred 
at the housing partnership and then again at the planning board with a um current project that they have right now shouldn't it look the same as the other places that's the purpose of affordable housing so that you can't differentiate who has an affordable house and who doesn't and i think going down from seven to eight hundred thousand dollars to four hundred thousand is a huge leap i don't think that we reduce them that much anyways well that no i think that's it a, is yeah. There's a significant difference in just the construction costs alone of a eight hundred to a four hundred thousand dollar house. You're not going to four hundred, but it's not four hundred thousand dollars. Even if it came in at six hundred thousand dollars, that's affordable. And I'm I'm only pointing this out because you and I have had discussions about this in the agreement. Um, but first of all, if somebody wanted to to create a, a subdivision that had I don't know nine houses, one of the, one of those houses or two of those houses would autom to me should automatically be affordable housing and not built any differently than the other houses. Well, that's that's under 40B that they have to look the same. You're affordable and you're right, right. Right. So we don't, we're not operating under 40B though. That's subdivision, subdivision is a different general law that uh, subdivision and zoning are two separate statutes that are different than 40B. So 40B calls out, if you're building under a comprehensive permit through the Zoning Board of Appeals, they all have to look the same. They can't be distinguishable from the outside. And that's, right. why, that's why in the multifamily developments where you're building garden style rental units or garden style um, condominiums, all of those units are gonna look the same from the outside if it's a garden style, if it's townhouse, that's where the developer is going to have to make it look like what um, the market rates look like. Okay. And again, and again, like I said, it's just leaving that flexibility in there. So there's a tip, just to just so you understand, a regular subdivision, there's no affordable requirements at all. So okay. you, can take, you can take a, an 11,000, 11 acre lot and carve out nine one acre lots out of that. And you don't even, you don't even have to have affordable housing provided there because you're doing that strictly under the subdivision control law versus subdivision and zoning. So all future subdivisions would require one acre lot? No. I'm, I'm, is that what you mean? No, 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 no. I'm saying that there's different types of subdivision. Okay. If someone came in with a straight subdivision, with no zoning necessary. Mm -hmm. So, and when I say that, yeah, okay. zoning, the zoning that's necessary is the open space preservation. That's what we have, this open space residential design where we allow for reduced lot sizes if open space is provided in that subdivision. So in order to go through that process, we then layered it and said, oh, in addition, we want 10% affordable housing. So that's the zoning component to open space residential design subdivisions. Under a straight subdivision, which is under chapter 41, that doesn't go through zoning. It's a simple majority of the planning board. And um, you're looking more at the details of how the road is being constructed. It's, it's a very, it's a different animal. And like okay. I said, you can have an 11 acre, you can have a it gets really absurd, but this is the way land use works in Massachusetts. You can have an 11 acre lot, and if you can get nine one acre lots that have 150 feet of frontage on an existing road, you really don't even have to go through the subdivision process. You can get what's called an approval not required uh, plan, and the planning board is compelled by state law to take action on that within 20 days and they have to determine whether or not it is a subdivision under the state law okay. and, and i'm only saying this to kind of prep people because we're probably going to be seeing one like this soon I'm, i know I've, I've, I've watched the planning board meetings from home so i've seen some of the projects that have come up in the addresses um and i appreciate your patience with me with the in-law payment i have another no. question about that what what percentage of a project would constitute the in lieu of payment amount and if it's published i apologize well we, we have so there is a policy that was established by the um affordable housing 
um, the local housing partnership, sorry. And, and basically what it does is, is it runs, we, when the developer requests to have that fee established, the assessor goes back and looks at six months of past sales data, comes up with an average. And then what we do is, is we, we subtract out what an affordable unit would cost. So what we get for the fee in lieu of is the difference between the average market rate for the last six months sales minus an affordable unit. And it's to kind of cover that gap. So right now it runs, it's up about 192, 192,000, I think. Okay. Not very high for town. I'm sorry, it's over that. It was two, it was 213. Okay. All right. I appreciate your patience with that. Um, and this the one more thing, the seven unit on one acre, that would be like seven townhouses, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. I appreciate that. I'm fine. Okay. Um, I understand we actually have a caller. Um, so I'll take that now, Jason. Yep. He's coming on right now. It's Ray Lezecki. And okay. Should be all set. Okay. Can you uh, state your name and uh, address for the record, please? Sure. Ray Lezecki, 111 John Street. All right. Uh, fire away. I have a couple of questions. Um, uh, the first one uh, deals with the uh, dimensional requirements in the new residential districts. The existing multifamily uh, minimum area is uh, four acres and it's being reduced to one acre. Yep. Yeah. So, Ray, the way that that um, came about was we were looking at the committee was looking at um, consolidating a number of different districts that we have throughout town. Um, so the community development district, which is where um, I'm trying to think Emerald Court is located. Um, there's also some other places throughout town that had um, multifamily developments there. And so when we were looking at this, and said this this consolidated multifamily district should all look the same, should all have the same requirements. And so where there's places where there's a multifamily district, um, it is one acre and there are places, um, I'm trying to think of what new, new places were introduced into the multifamily. And the only one that I can think of is up on, um, Livingston, um, Livingston by the um, Chandler, where the um, train crossing is. And if you're familiar with what's up there, there is a um, Jones Farm. Uh, there's one lot that sits in a heavy industrial district. And then there's Katie's Way, which is, uh, I think it's 16 affordable units there under a comprehensive permit, and then 16 across the street in Nolan's Court. So when the committee was looking at it, it said, you know, that one unit or that one lot is in the midst of all of these um, uh, multifamily developments it is sitting on an acre. And it just doesn't it didn't seem to make sense to have that remain as a heavy industrial district because um, right now there's an existing residence on it. But so it was giving it was giving thoughts to those types of places that. Um, again could have seven acres there but it would blend in with what its surrounding was okay uh, the other area is the new village residential which has a minimum area of uh, one acre but it's allowed by a special permit to have uh, an area of 7500 square feet so less than a quarter of an acre and th that area looks like it's on uh, route 38 and i'm wondering uh, how do you put high density in 7,500 square feet and allow for the parking and or traffic. It seems much too small. Right, so it's not it's not gonna work in all instances. And in that case where it's a 7,500 square foot um, parcel, you're not gonna get the seven units there because it's seven units per acre. So how, how many units would you get in 7,500 square feet? 
I think it would be one. That, that lot reduction was probably for other purposes, recognizing what is on Route 38 as existing lots right now. Uh, the other question I had was uh, the reduction from 1,000 feet to 500 feet for the, uh, the signage um, for the billboards. Uh, we've had a couple of uh, cases come before the zoning boards of uh, appeals, and uh, what happens is those people within a thousand feet are not notified because they're not direct abutters. Uh, will uh, whether it goes from a thousand feet to five hundred feet? Uh, will this article allow for amendments on the floor uh, so that these people can be recognized as abutters? Well, as far as the boat's concerned, I'm not sure how that that's going to be addressed. I know that the planning board. Um, and the zoning bylaw committee are interested in seeing it as an up or down vote. But as far as notice to abutters, that that is actually something that could be taken up because if if you remember when that the billboard section of the bylaw was passed, it was the board of selectmen that were given the permit granting authority there. And so the selectmen have um, regulations right now for billboards we kind of set them up so that before we got those applications coming in that they would have regulations on file and that's something that could be done at the um, selectman level okay so when will we find out whether or not it's going to be an up or down vote will that be the night of the town meeting or will we know in advance yeah i I don't know. That's something that's being addressed by town council and others right now. All right, that's all my questions. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Um, Jason Marshall, do we have anybody else uh, calling in? Not at the moment, but I would maybe give it a minute or so for the delay to catch up a little bit. Let's see if anyone else calls. Uh, okay, I mean, well, we've been talking about this for a while now. So uh, anybody from the committee uh, have any other questions? No, the only question I would have is, uh, has the planning board voted on this? They did, They're they voted Monday night. And what was the result? Um, unanimous um, recommend adoption. Okay. Okay, um, hearing no more questions. Um, what, how does the committee wanna proceed on this? Do we have any motions? Mr. Chairman, are we voting just on Article 27 or 27 and 28? Um, I think I'm just going to do 27, uh, even though I know they go together. Um, let's let's just do one at a time and see how it goes. Um, so, I, I mean, we have a couple of choices, right? We could defer, or we could uh, or make a motion to uh, recommend adoption, or I'd like to make a motion to recommend adoption. I have a motion. I'll second that. And a second. Okay, roll call vote. Uh, Mr. Johnson. On mute. On mute. About that, I was on mute for a second. Um, Mr. Chairman, let me just note for the record and disclaim for the benefit of anyone watching um, or participating that I was a member of this committee for some time in my service to the town as a selectman. Um, that ended in April of 2019, um, and I have not participated on the committee since that point in time, but um, I want to make that known. I will vote um, in the affirmative. Okay. Uh, Mr. Cook? Yes. Uh, Mr. Christian? Yes. Uh, Ms. Bishop? Yes. Ms. Higgins? Yes. Yes. Jazz of Morian. Aye. And Chair Voits, aye as well. So that's unanimous. Thank you. Yep. Oh. All right. So, um, Article 28, page 38 is the second part of this same deal. Right. So, hopefully, this will take up less of your time. <laughs> um, what I want to share with you is. Um, Can you see the proposed yes. zoning map? Okay. So 
again, if Article 27 um, fails a town meeting, then Article 28 will be withdrawn because Article 28 with the map really reflects um, the changes in the zoning districts that are going to occur. So, like I said, we would, sorry about this. Yes, are not easy. Um, the, the overlay districts, again, have been reduced. All of those overlay districts are what it show on the existing map today. Uh, the transition district shows what's as exists today. Office Research does. West Side Neighborhood does. Uh, Residential 40 does. Farming does. Multifamily, like I said, we picked up things like Emerald Court, um, Jones Farm, and some other locations because uh, there was a consolidation of multifamily districts into the one multifamily grouping. Um, and I wanted to point out that one of our guidelines was some parcels in town are split zoned. And what the committee wanted to do was to try and make sure that all parcels were zoned just in one zone to make it easier for the owners, for the abutters, for everyone to understand that. Um, the other thing that was done was this big green in the middle is currently heavy industrial, but to the left is the Great Swamp, which is owned by the town, and to the right is National Grid property. So what the committee decided was, was that that should just be parkland because it's not, it's an environmentally sensitive area that's not going to see any type of development. And then, um, I think one of the last things that I just wanted to point out about this is that um, we also removed the highway corridor overlay district, which is down here um, up of South Street. And people remember back in 2004, that was passed for the Mills Mall and uh, Mills ended up going bankrupt. The land ended up in Simon Properties' hands. And in order to have a mall built there, they have to build a ramp and in order to build a ramp, you have to add a fourth lane to 93 all the way to New Hampshire. So um, that zoning will not most likely ever be used. So it's being proposed to be removed from the um, bylaw and the map. That's it. All right, thank you. Um, Mr. Marshall, do we have anybody on the phone? No calls. Any questions from the committee? Uh, we have any Since motions? I do have a quick question. Oh, Donna, please. Um, last, the last time we had um, details presented to us in regards to zoning, what was presented to the finance committee ultimately didn't get, got changed before the meeting. Um, is that and is that anyway going to happen this time? I don't believe so, Donna. I have not heard from anyone, and I can tell you that um, that the committee and I think the planning board, um, you know, both voted unanimously to see this approved, and everybody's. It's been yeah, a long it? process. It's been a long process, and I think I think we're there. You know, go ahead. Sorry, where did where did ultimately? um cte units or nursing homes or, or that source that where did those wind up going into what zone um i think i want to take a look at the map again is that i'm i won't share the screen but i just want to look to double check um i think it was allowed um in the heavy industrial district which would pick up that parcel that had the problems at the last town meeting because that actually was a very good parcel for that. And if it hadn't been some confusion, that probably would have passed. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that it was picked up this time. Okay. So so this is not going to be zoned at all for being like next to a residential or a commercial or what zones actually is it going into besides heavy industrial? You can give me a minute. Okay. Um, I would have to take a look at.
you know, I don't have, I don't have the, um, it's really important. I'm not, look, if anybody else has other questions as I'm kind of searching for this. Yeah, let me go on mute. Yeah, does anybody have any other questions? I don't see any. I don't have. Obviously, for town meeting, I'll have the full um, bylaw in my possession. Just doing this all online right now. Right, and I definitely understand that, but this was a very big issue. Yep, no, I... And this definitely needs to be addressed before I can actually put any kind of vote through. And I actually don't think that the Finance Committee should ever just defer to the Planning Board with things that impact our town financially, like zoning changes. I think we should always take a vote. Trying this. Um, I don't know. If, if you want to table this and when I find the information, um, we'll come back I'll just to raise my hand, Mr. Chairman, and, and I'll send you the, the comment. It impacts how I would just say something right now. And that was something that should definitely be cared for, given the fact that it was a huge issue during that meeting. I don't disagree, Donna. So I, that's why, I mean, I don't know if we should wait for an answer, if you can reach out to somebody, but it's gonna impact how things are. It's just, it's a matter of me pulling that document up, that's all, uh, and I'll. Mr. Chairman? You can see your instant messages, Steve. Yeah, Mr. Cook. I'll move to table. Second, motion. Mr. Chairman. Motion to table and a second. Uh, take a roll call vote, Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Cook. Aye. Uh, Mr. Christian. Aye. Ms. Bishop. Aye. Ms. Higgins. Ms. Higgins, you're on mute. <laughs> Sorry about that. I apologize. When we table that, when does that get, get readdressed? We bring up a motion to take it off the table, right? Correct. And when would that occur, Tom? My motion is to table. It's non-debatable right now. Motion to table is non-debatable. Yeah, so at, when, at a good stopping point, we'll bring it back up. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I just, I, sorry to do that. And I know you're in the middle of a motion, but I did find, <laughs> I did find what I was looking for. Okay, let me uh, finish the vote. And then I'll, see if there's another motion. I'll remove my motion. All right. Because Thank you. Removing his motion. I, I was doing that, Madam Chair. I mean, Mr. Chairman, for sake of timing and the people at home. Uh, yeah, I understand. All right. So, Steve, uh, do you have a answer for us? Yes. So, again, I apologize. Here's the use table. And um, that, that, parcel is in industrial one that's located here so when, when we go down um you'll see here assisted living continuing care are allowed in that district as well as um nursing homes rest homes similar long term so there that was picked up down and through that what happened at the last town meeting is now um picked up and included as an allowed use for that parcel in this bylaw okay thank you i appreciate your patience getting that for me you're welcome okay um any other questions or do we have any motions on article 28 Mr. Chairman, I'll move to adopt Article 28. Motion. And I'll second that motion. A second. Mr. Johnson. Um, I vote aye. Mr. Cook. Aye. I thank you. Uh, Mr. Christian. Aye. Ms. Bishop. Aye. Ms. Higgins. 
Aye. Mr. Asenvorian? Aye. And the chair votes aye as well. Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, just a quick uh, point of clarification. I think it was stated, but I just want to verify, did the planning board take action on this article and, and did I hear correctly that it was a unanimous vote in favor? Correct. That's what I heard and Steve's affirming now. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, back to the beginning here. Oh, let, me, uh, let me share again. Thank you again for your time. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Uh, share, sharing, I think. That over here. And go back to the top. Section one, article one. Town officers by ballot. Blah, 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 blah. You can read there. That's it. So this is our annual um, election um, article. Do you have any questions? Oh, sorry. Do we have anybody on the phone? <laughs> All right. Anybody from the committee? Any motions? Move to adopt Article 1. Motion to adopt or recommend adoption. Do I hear a second? Okay. I'll second. Nope. Mr. Christian, second. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Yes, I'll second. Okay. Uh, Mr. Cook. Aye. Mr. Christian. Mr. Christian, are you voting uh, yay or nay? Oh, aye. Yep. Ms. Bishop. Yay. Aye. Higgins. Aye. Ms. Asamorian. Aye. And Chair votes aye as well. On to Article 2. Section 2, Article 2. This is the uh, fix the sellers of elected officials. Anybody on the phone? All right, while we wait, anybody from the committee? I'm guessing not. Just reviewed this last one. 30 seconds. Not on my watch. All right, not hearing anything. Um, do I hear a motion? Move to adopt. Got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Mr. Bishop. Um, Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Cook. Aye. Mr. Christian. Aye. Uh, Ms. Bishop. Aye. Ms. Higgins. Aye. Azamorian? Aye. And I as well. Uh, on to article three. Uh, okay, three dash 23. Uh, here and act upon reports from various town officers. Anybody uh, from the public on the phone? Okay. Any uh, questions from the committee? Any motions? Move to adopt. Yep, uh, I'll, I'll second that motion. Motion and a second. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Uh, Mr. Cook. Aye. Mr. Christian. Aye. Mr. Bishop. Aye. Ms. Higgins. Aye. Mr. Azamorian. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. 324. For the town manager uh, to authorize the town manager to enter into lease purchase agreements. 
You got any on the phone? No comments. I'll move to adopt, Mr. Chairman. Motion to adopt. Second. Second. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Cook. Aye. Mr. Christian. Aye. Ms. Bishop. Aye. Ms. Higgins. Aye. Mr. Azavorian. Aye. And Chair Bowtie as well. 325. Uh, Some of money. Well, uh, you want to give a brief description of this, Richard? Sure. So, 325 is um, an annual article to um, appropriate the Chapter 90 money we get from the Commonwealth to undertake work on our roadways, our sidewalks, uh, bridges, uh, and our general uh, roadway infrastructure. Uh, we, re we receive annually um, about $980,000 um, to undertake this work. We do the work first, um, we pay for the work, and then we get reimbursed by the Commonwealth. This article, the an annual article, just authorized appropriating the use of those funds. Thank you. Do we have anybody on the phone? Any questions or motions from the committee? Move to Move adopt. To recommend Second. adoption. We have a motion from Mr. Johnson. Recommend adoption. Second. Okay. Yes, Mr. Azarone, a second. Um, Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Cook. Aye. Uh, Mr. Christian. Aye. Uh, Mr. Bishop? Aye. Ms. Higgins? Aye. Ms. Azavorian? Aye. And Chair votes aye as well. On to Article oh, 326, I guess. Is that page 6? The. Um, All right, so this is the revolving funds uh, that we have to approve each year. Um, do we have any callers on Article 326? Okay. Any questions from the committee? I think Richard just sent out the uh, current balances, I believe, today. <clears throat> any motions? So moved. Motion from Mr. Azamorian. Second. Second from Ms. Bishop. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Cook. Aye. Mr. Christian. Aye. Uh, Ms. Bishop. Aye. Uh, Ms. Higgins. Aye. Mr. Azamorian. Aye. And Chair Votai as well. Okay, Richard, Article 4. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, article 4 is the um, annual budget article for the, for the town. Um, article 4 um, seeks approval of the FY21 operating budget for the town and the school. The FY21 budget will increase uh, 3 million seven hundred fifty nine thousand six hundred and fifty seven dollars over the uh, fiscal 2020 budget the major areas of increase uh, the school budget will increase one million four hundred seventy eight thousand five hundred twelve dollars towns operating budget will increase nine hundred eighty five thousand six hundred and seventy six dollars the Shawsheen Tech Assessment will increase $330,661. Within this budget, there are no new uh, positions. Um, the uh, major uh, increases are due to contractual obligations for 
cost of living increases. There is $1,364,975 included in this budget of debt service for the proposed um, DPW uh, school maintenance facility. Uh, if it is approved at a future town meeting, we just set aside the debt service for the possibility of that uh, project coming back in the fall. Um, and those really were the major changes. This was a level service budget. And uh, the departments, including the schools, really uh, adhered to that uh, directive. Um, one last thing, uh, we are um, taxing uh, to the full levy limit as we normally do to fund this budget. If the values of the properties in town be, uh, remain the same, if the uh, split between uh, commercial and residential stays the same, the um, average household uh, would see an increase of $182. I'm sorry, Richard, was that 182? $182, yes. Okay, do we have uh, anybody on the phone? No calls. Um, do we have any questions from the committee? Well, we've been reviewing this. Um, so do we have any motions then? Move to adopt Article 4, Mr. Chairman. I'll second that. Motion in a second. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Cook. Aye. Mr. Christian. Aye. Ms. Bishop. Aye. Ms. Higgins. Aye. Ms. Jason Vorian. Aye. And Chair votes aye as well. Okay, scrolling down. Article 5. Richard. Mr. Chairman, Article 5 is the to raise and appropriate um, $6,623,932 uh, to fund the sewer enterprise fund. Um, the sewer enterprise fund is, is actually decreasing $79,630 from FY21 compared to FY20. The uh, major decrease uh, within the Sewer Enterprise Fund is due to debt service reducing. The uh, sewer rates are not projected to increase in FY21, uh, and uh, there are no uh, major changes or increases in this budget, with the exception of an increase to low, uh, lower sewer assessment, which will be increasing $46,900. Okay, um, do we have anybody on the phone? No call. Uh, do we have questions from the committee? Or any motions? Move to adopt. Second. Motion and a second. Uh, Mr. Johnson? Aye. Uh, Mr. Cook? No. Uh, Mr. Christian? Aye. Uh, Ms. Bishop? Aye. Ms. Higgins? Aye. Mr. Asnavorian? Aye. Chair votes aye. So six to one, two, three, four. Yeah, six to one. Recommend adoption. All right, so Article 6. Article 6, Mr. Chairman, is um, seeking to raise and appropriate the sum of $7,346,811 to uh, fund the Water Enterprise Fund. Water Enterprise Fund um, funds the water distribution uh, operations, as well as the water treatment plants operations. The enterprise fund is increasing 
$184,163, FY21 to FY20. Um, the big changes within this budget um, relating to salary, um, there are two positions within the budget for operators in training to bring additional staff on to assist at the water treatment plant. We don't have um, as many operators up there as we should, We're trying to build uh, upon the uh, staff that we have um, in case there are people out in the future, if there are emergencies in the future, and to start planning for when people retire and get, so we wanna get people in there and trained. But other than the uh, two operator and training positions, which are the only new positions within any of the budgets in the, in the town, um, those are, that's really the, uh, the major change uh, in this budget. Rates will not be increasing in FY21. And uh, as you can see from this, uh, this article, uh, we plan and we project a $92,700 surplus. All right, thank you. Uh, do we have anybody on the phone? Okay, any questions from the committee? Seeing none. Uh, do we have any motions? Move to adopt, Mr. Chairman. A motion. Second. And a second. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Cook. No. Mr. Christian. Aye. Ms. Bishop. Aye. Ms. Higgins. Aye. Mr. Azamorian. Aye. And chair votes aye. Six one. Um, on to Article 7. Article 7, Mr. Chairman, is uh, seeking to raise and appropriate $1,162,940 for the Stormwater Enterprise Fund. Uh, this is a new enterprise fund created at town meeting, the October special town meeting. The funds uh, within this enterprise will strictly go towards complying with our uh, stormwater permit and undertaking capital projects uh, in relation to stormwater improvements throughout the uh, community. The uh, amount that we're seeking to raise is, one, uh, is the $1,162,940. The revenue will come from a uh, stormwater fee charged to both residents uh, and commercial industrial properties. The average, the, the fee to the residents will be $75 per year. Larger residential and commercial will see a higher uh, fee. The important thing to note regarding this enterprise fund, one, there are no salaries attributed to this fund, and two, there are no indirect costs. This will strictly be a fund to uh, pay for compliance of the permit and uh, needed uh, stormwater and drainage projects throughout the community. Okay, hey, thank you. Um, do we have anybody on the phone for this one? No callers, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Do you have any questions from the committee? <clears throat> Seeing none, uh, do we have any motions? Move to adopt, Mr. Chairman. A motion to adopt. Second. From Mr. Cook. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Cook. Aye. Mr. Christian. Aye. Ms. Bishop. Aye. Ms. Higgins. Aye. Mr. Asenvorian. Aye. And chair votes aye. Unanimous. Okay, Article 8. Uh, Article 8 is. Um, seeking to uh, raise and appropriate $392,219 for the cable uh, TV television enterprise fund, which is our telemedia department. Funding for the uh, enterprise fund um, comes from our uh, cable uh, television access fee, both Verizon and Comcast pay the community. 
the funds go towards the salaries and operations of the telemedia department and any indirect expenses. We take in uh, substantially more than we uh, appropriate for this budget, and those funds will uh, close to uh, retained earnings for future use by the telemedia department, whether it's for capital projects or to help uh, fund the budget if both Comcast and Verizon revenues uh, start to um, diminish in the future. This is a, um, a fund that uh, is paid for through uh, revenue from the uh, cable television uh, companies. Okay, thank you. Um, any callers? Anybody on the phone? No callers, Mr. Chairman, um, but the stream is about 30 seconds behind, uh, just a point of information. 30 seconds behind. Okay. Well, while we wait, does the committee have any questions? Okay, I'd look for a motion on recommendation here. Move to adopt, Mr. Chairman. Motion. Second. And a second, Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Cook. Aye. Mr. Christian. Aye. Ms. Bishop. Aye. Uh, Ms. Higgins. Aye. Ms. Asnavorian. Aye. And chair votes aye as well. Unanimous. Article 9. Article 9, Mr. Chairman, seeks to transfer $95,000 from Water Enterprise uh, retained earnings uh, for two projects. Uh, the first for, uh, for, for two items. The first is a uh, replacement of um, an F550 dump with plow package. This is $55,000. The cost of this truck is actually $110,000. The water enterprise fund will be splitting the cost 50% with the um, sewer enterprise fund. The need for this truck is because the, it is replacing another truck that is 13 years old. The diesel engine um, is not functioning. For lack of a better term, it's a blown out diesel engine that is not worth replacing or repairing. Um, the need for this truck is because it's the, it's, the, it's the smallest truck that we have between the two divisions. All of the other dump trucks are six, are six to 10 wheel trucks. So a small truck is needed for us, for us to utilize throughout the year. Um, and, the, uh, and it's just time for it to be replaced. The second item that we're seeking to fund uh, will cost $40,000 for a risk and resiliency assessment and emergency response plan. The, uh, this is in compliance with EPA uh, that we must conduct a risk and resiliency assessment of the water treatment plant and the water distribution system in order to evaluate our vulnerabilities, threats, and consequences from any potential hazards. Uh, once we complete that assessment and it's certified by EPA, um, we uh, will then need to create an emergency response plan for EPA which will include strategies and resources to improve our resiliency, physical structures and cybersecurity. We'll need to come up with plans and procedures um, for responding to natural uh, hazards. We will need to uh, develop actions and equipment to lessen the impact of these uh, hazards. Uh, and that'll all be part of a, uh, again, an emergency response plan that we would submit to EPA. The $95,000, as I mentioned, will come from retained earnings. Uh, water retained earnings at the moment has a balance of $1,495,574. Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Um, do we have anybody on the phone? No callers, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, 
I just want to ask a quick question, uh, Richard. Um, the emergency response and risk and resiliency you said was specifically for the water system, correct? That's why it's coming out of the water uh, enterprise? Correct. It's for both the, uh, it's going to be for the water treatment plant and the distribution system. Thank you. Any questions from the committee? Seeing none. Uh, any motions? Move to adopt Article 9. Motion. I'll second that. Ms. Higgins with a second. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Cook. No. Mr. Christian. Aye. I heard aye. Um, yeah, Ms. Uh, Bishop. Aye. Ms. Higgins. Aye. Ms. Asenborian. Aye. And chair votes aye, six to one. Recommend adoption. Article 10. Article 10 is seeking to transfer um, $55,000 from the sewer enterprise retained earnings uh, to pay for the remaining 50% of the F550 dump uh, with plow package that I mentioned earlier. Um, sewer retained earnings currently has a balance of $5,598,690. Uh, and again, $55,000 will come from there to fund this truck. Thank you. Do we have anybody uh, on the phone? No call is Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Questions from the committee? Any motions? Move to adopt. Motion to adopt. I'll second that. Second from Ms. Higgins. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Cook? No. Mr. Christian? Aye. Uh, Ms. Bishop? Aye. Ms. Higgins? Aye. Ms. Azenvorian? Aye. And Chair votes aye. Six to one. Recommended option. Uh, what do we got? 11. Article 11, Mr. Chairman. Um, seeks authorization to borrow uh, $1,500,000 for water distribution improvements in, in uh, the town. Uh, funds will specifically go to um, Bay State uh, Road neighborhood for um, improvements of the water infrastructure in that area. Funds will be borrowed, if approved, the funds will be borrowed over the summer. The debt service is already included. In fund and within the rates that I, as I mentioned earlier are not increasing and this is just part of a continued uh, capital improvement uh, plan that the DPW has for water uh, distribution improvements throughout the community. Thank you. Um, do we have anybody on the phone for article 11? No callers Mr. Chairman. No call. Uh, any questions from the committee? Um, actually, I have one. I don't want to butt in front of anybody, but uh, so Richard, uh, on the capital plan, we're spending a roughly the same amount for the next uh, few years, or how long was that? Do you remember? I have it. Well, when we projected out the rates, it was over the next uh, 10 years, but um, you know, the, the water distribution improvements will probably go for the next 20 years based on the amount of two inch pipe and AC asbestos pipe that we have in the community that needs to be replaced. Okay. Any uh, other questions or do we have any motions? Move to adopt Article 11. Motion to recommend adoption. I think that's the second from Ms. Bishop. Uh, Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Cook. Aye. Mr. Christian. Aye. Ms. Bishop. Aye. Ms. Higgins. Aye. Mr. Azenvorian. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. 7 recommend adoption. Article 12. 
Article 12 is an annual article we've had on for the last few years. Um, it's uh, transferring funds from a bond premium in the amount of $55,113.92. It's used to reduce bonds that were uh, refinanced um, in, uh, in 2016 uh, and were required by the state to use a portion of these proceeds each year to reduce the town exempt debt, debt principle, which we're doing. Um, I'll wait a couple of seconds here. Do we have anybody on the phone for Article 12? No callers, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, any questions from the committee? Or any motions? Move to adopt. Adoption. With a simultaneous motion. <laughs> we'll do My a motion. motion will serve as a second. <laughs> okay, Mr. Johnson's a second. Mr. Azavorian's a motion. Uh, Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Cook. Aye. Mr. Christian. Aye. Uh, Ms. Bishop. Aye. Ms. Higgins. Aye. Mr. Asnavorian? Aye. And Chair votes aye. Seven there. Uh, Article 13. Article 13 is another article uh, that um, is on the warrant annually. Uh, this is for the uh, senior tax relief program and the business facilities program. Uh, this is uh, transferring funds of $52,500 from the overlay surplus to fund this program that allows seniors and veterans to work in the town offices and receive uh, a reduction in their taxes of uh, $1,500 if they work a full uh, approximately 100 hours. Okay, um, anybody on the phone for Article 13? No callers, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, any questions or motions from the committee? I'll offer a motion, Mr. Chairman, to recommend adoption. Thank you. Motion on the table. Second for Mr. Azavorian. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Uh, Mr. Cook. Aye. Mr. Christian. Aye. Ms. Bishop. Aye. Ms. Higgins. Aye. Mr. Asnavorian. Aye. And Chair votes aye as well, unanimous. Article 14. Article 14, Mr. Chairman, is the um, annual um, allocation of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund and the plan uh, for fun uh, funding allocation. The starting balance uh, in the fund is $4,992,486. Those funds uh, can be used throughout the year by the selectmen for the creation of new units or buying down existing uh, affordable units. This um, account is funded through the payment lieu uh, fee that developers pay for to the planning board if they do not develop uh, affordable housing within any of their um, housing developments in the past. I think the last time uh, it was done was in 2013. Funds were transferred from the um, Community Preservation Act um, Housing uh, Fund. But again, that hasn't been done uh, since uh, 2013. And again, this is an annual article just uh, laying out the allocation plan. Thank you. Uh, do we have anybody on the phone for Article 14? No callers, Mr. Chairman. Uh, do we have any questions from the committee? Or any motions? Move to adopt. <laughs> All right, who's, uh, who, I heard Dave because he's got a deeper voice. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a motion. Do I hear a second? 
Second. All right. A motion is a second. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Cook. Aye. Mr. Christian. Aye. Uh, Ms. Bishop. Aye. Ms. Higgins. Aye. Mr. Asnavorian. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. 7-0. 15, Article 15. Article 15. Um, is the appropriation of um, community preservation funds uh, within the community to the various reserves and for administrative costs. The, um, this is an annual article that uh, sets out the appropriation for uh, CPA funds, setting aside the 10% um, for open space, community housing, and um, Historic preservation, which mostly which all goes towards the service of the town of renovations. Uh, the balance of the revenue um, will go towards the uh, budgeted reserve, which is the undesignated fund within the community preservation uh, fund to be used at a later date um, specific to these purposes. Um, in the uh, handout at town meeting, uh, as we normally do. Uh, there are balances for all of our funds uh, in regard to um, community preservation. The undesignated fund currently has $529,879. Balance in the open space reserve is $217,704. And the balance in the uh, housing uh, reserve is $560,644. Again, there's no balance in the historic reserve because all of those funds have gone to pay for the uh, debt service on the um, town hall. All right, thank you. Uh, do we have anybody on the phone? No callers, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, do you have any questions from the committee? Not seeing any. Um, do we have any motions? Motion to adopt. Motion to adopt. Second. A second. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Cook. Aye. Mr. Christian. Aye. Ms. Bishop. Aye. Ms. Higgins. Aye. Ms. Jasnavorian. Aye. And chair votes aye as well. Unanimous. Article 16. <clears throat> Article 16, Mr. Ch Mr. Chair, is appropriating $40,000 from the Community Preservation Fund Open Space Reserve to be used for the improvement and expansion of existing trail network within the community, as well as uh, improvements uh, and access to existing open space. Um, funds will uh, specifically, uh, most of the funds will specifically be used to address projects that uh, we have existing funds for that uh, additional funding we need, specifically uh, Chandler Wellfield, where we like to make um, significant improvements uh, to that area. Uh, any balance in funds will go to other open space and trails within the community. Uh, we're finding that uh, through the, uh, the uh, hard work of the open space uh, and recreation committee, as well as Nonprofit uh, groups that support open space within the community and the network of volunteers that they have, that the um, trails and open space in the community are being used more and more. Um, and uh, these funds will allow uh, the um, different groups and the open space and recreation committee to continue improving and expanding the trail network uh, as they are used uh, at a greater capacity. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there anyone on the phone? No callers, Mr. Chairman. Any questions from the committee or any motions? Move to adopt. We have a motion to recommend adoption. I'll second that. And a second from Ms. Higgins. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Uh, Mr. Cook. Aye. Mr. Christian. Aye. Bishop. Aye. Ms. Higgins. Aye. 
Aye. Chair votes aye. Unanimous. Article 17. Article 17 is uh, seeking to eliminate an existing easement that has been received from uh, Cube Smart on Wuba Street. Uh, sorry. Originally... Uh, sorry. Uh, Jason, would you? Okay. Thank you. Never mind. Go ahead. We originally received this easement um, when we were doing work in the Wuba Street area for drainage. Um, the uh, work in that area is complete and the easement is no longer needed, uh, so we're seeking that uh, the easement be terminated. Okay. Um, anybody on the phone for Article 17? Anybody on the phone? No callers, Mr. Chairman. Uh, any questions from the committee or motions at this time? Move to adopt. Motion to adopt. Second. Sorry, was there a second? There was, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I'm not, who was that from? Was that from you? I'm sorry, it's, it's Todd Johnson. Okay, sorry, sorry. I had trouble hearing that one. Um, okay, Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Cook. Aye. Mr. Christian. Aye. Uh, Ms. Bishop. Aye. Uh, Ms. Higgins. Aye. Mr. Azamorian. Aye. The chair votes aye as well. You know. Article 18. Article 18, Mr. Chairman, is uh, seeking to. Uh, Seeking authorization for the selectmen to sell town owned land um, to um, probably abutters of the land who are requested to purchase uh, these parcels to add to their current parcels. The um, land will be sold in accordance with the town's bylaw. There will be a minimum of value placed on the land through a bid process. It's uh, Process that we've used in the past. This land is not land that any of the town any of the town departments uh, need. And again, they've been requested uh, by the abutters uh, to purchase. And we'd like to, and in order to sell them, we need town meeting authorization. Okay, thank you. Um, do we have anybody on the phone for Article 18? No callers, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any uh, questions from the committee? <laughs> Do we have any motions? Motion to adopt. Motion to adopt. Second. And a second from Mr. Bishop. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Cook. Aye. Mr. Christian. Aye. Uh, Ms. Bishop. Aye. Ms. Higgins. Aye. As the Aye. Chair votes aye as well. You know. Article 19. Article 19, Mr. Chairman, is an amendment to the town's stormwater bylaw. Uh, the changes that are being made uh, to uh, Chapter 19, uh, which is our stormwater management and erosion control bylaw, um, being made in order to comply with our EPA uh, stormwater permit requirements. That became effective July 1, 2018. Uh, the changes to the bylaw um, uh, essentially uh, uh, include additions of revi revised performance standards for our new EPA permit. The revisions also align definitions within our bylaw uh, to those in the EPA permit. The revisions have no financial, Im financial impact on the residents. Um, and uh, the re revisions will uh, only impact future development to ensure cleaner stormwater runoff and again compliance with our stormwater permit. I know the uh, town engineer and the DPW director are, are part of this meeting in case there are any specific questions regarding the changes to the bylaw. Great, thank you. Um, do we have anybody on the phone? Mr. Chairman, we don't for this article, but we do have somebody who would like to speak on Article 18, if possible. On article 18. Um, 
Okay, let's uh, let's bring them on, and then we'll come back to nineteen. Whenever you're ready. Uh, sure. Or were you talking to the caller? <laughs> I was talking to the caller. Uh, caller, whenever you're ready. Hi, yeah. my name is Rich, Rich Lavasser, 25 Anthony Road. My question is on Article 18, but it's it's not going. I don't think it's going to impact your the way you just voted. The question is: Is are these all residential property properties? It's a combination of. If I may, mean, Mr. Chairman, it's a combination of both summer and, and residential areas that resident abutters have requested, and others, and I would say a majority are in a more industrial areas. And there's small lots that people would like to add to their current lots. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. And Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, when the handout is finished for town meeting, it will go on the website uh, soon. Uh, well, and well. Well, before town meeting, we'll have maps of each of these parcels. Oh, great. That, that would be helpful. Thank you. Okay. Um, back to Article 19. Um, did we have anybody on the phone for Article 19? No call is for 19, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Do we have any questions from the committee? Um, Actually, I, I would have I have one for maybe Mr. Hardiman. Maybe um, I, were you the one that uh, controlled this process of updating this uh, these bylaws? Yes, I did, Mr. Chairman. Okay, um, can you can you explain the sort of the process? Did you work with anybody statewide, or uh, like you, just explain your process for how you came up with the updates? Of course, Mr. Chairman. Um, so. The EPA permit outlines uh, what's required to be in our stormwater bylaw. Uh, the process we undertook was we worked with a consultant to review the existing bylaw uh, and formulate the amendments that are required in order to comply with the permit. And the you know the changes uh, you know as outlined in the uh, you know the markups. Uh, you know really it's it's more about performance standards for new development and redevelopment. Uh, and ensuring that uh, we address the total phosphorus loads. Uh, we also work with community development on the, uh, you know, the final draft of this as a town planner, as well as community development director and conservation. Great. Um, did it have to go through any like lawyer reading and whatnot or? Review? No, we have not. Nope. The, the changes are fairly minor as far as uh, the legalese within the, the permit. It's more adjusting definitions and uh, adding a couple of performance standards that are required under the permit. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, Senior Town Council and Town Council have reviewed the entire warrant and there are no issues raised. Great, thank you. Are there any other uh, questions from the committee? Hearing none, uh, do we have any motions? Motion to adopt. If I heard that correctly, that was a motion to adopt from Susan. Yes. yes. Uh, any motion to adopt on the table? Second. And a second from Mr. Cook. Mr. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Cook? Aye. Mr. Christian? Aye. Uh, Ms. Bishop? Hi. Uh, Higgins. Hi. Mr. Asnavorian. Hi. And Chair Votai as well. Unanimous. Um, On to number 20. Article 20, Mr. Chairman, is a citizen's petition. Um, I spoke, uh, my office spoke to the petitioner and um, I said I could um, present the article. Um, the uh, article is seeking to uh, place uh, parcels under the control uh, of the Conservation Commission uh, and to protect them in perpetuity because of water, uh, shed resources, open space, and wildlife life habitat. Uh, the land in question um, was reviewed by the uh, 
the conservation uh, agent who thought it was a good idea to protect this parcel, which is uh, because of its uh, wildlife habitat and its uh, watershed resources. It's a piece of land that the town um, has no uh, plans uh, for development or to, or to utilize. Uh, and uh, we already uh, use it for um, for uh, flood storage. So um, we uh, think it's a good idea that it's uh, put under the care and control of the Conservation Commission also. Okay, thank you. Um, do we have anybody on the phone for Article 20? No callers, Mr. Chairman. Um, and are we still uh, around 15 seconds behind or something? That's correct, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, any questions from the committee? Mr. Chairman, just one uh, for the town manager. Does this have to be reviewed by any other boards and voted on? The Conservation Commission will uh, take it up at its next meeting just to do have a formal vote. Um, I'm not sure if it's something that the Open Space and Recreation Commission com um, uh, Committee will uh, take up. Um, I'll know better next week when they meet. Any other questions, Mr. Azamoria? Well, I'm, I'm not sure that we should be voting on it unless uh, the Conservation Commission has voted on it. Perhaps we should table it uh, prior to town meeting and find out what their vote is. That makes sense. Does anybody have any other questions? Mr. Chairman, just a point of clarification, was Mr. Asnivorian offering a motion? No, that was uh, not an official motion, just a uh, question out to the committee if anyone else feels the same way. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense, Dave. Um, but uh, does anybody have any questions before we, before Dave makes a motion? Seeing none, would you like to offer that up, Dave? I'll motion to table Article 20 to the time specific to the Finance Committee meeting prior to annual town meeting. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Mr. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Cook? Aye. Mr. Christian? Aye. Uh, Ms. Bishop? Aye. Ms. Higgins? Aye. Uh, Mr. Asnavorian? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. So we unanimous table to the FinCom meeting prior to annual town meeting. Uh, Article 21. Article 21, Mr. Chairman, is a petition article. I'm not sure if the petitioner was going to call in. All right. Um, do we have anybody on the phone? We can give them a little time here. Not yet, Mr. Chairman, but I do believe um, he had expressed interest uh, at the beginning of the meeting, so we'll, um, we'll wait for him. Okay. I'm on uh, Article 21 right now. Mr. Chairman, we have the caller on the line. Okay, could you state your name and address for the record, please? Caller? Yes. Uh, could you state your name and address for the record, please? George Ferdinand, 56 Pratt Street. Great. Um, do you want to? Sort of go over what the article is intended for? Yeah, do you want me to uh, explain it? Uh, yeah, I guess. I just didn't know I got, I got called today that um, I should be in attendance. So, um, 20, article number 21, I mean, yeah, has to do with. The filling of a vacancy of, um, for instance, if somebody was to either move, die, um, turn in the resignation.
can currently be made, and I'm sure um, tell me if no, um, tell me if this is not correct. But currently, the way it goes is for like the selectmen board. If somebody um, left the town, let's say they would within if it's not within like only four months, it would be an election for the town, a special election. Then any of the other boards, if it's more than four months, what would happen is there's two things that could happen. The select, the select board could pick after um, in taking any um, folks that would want the position and going over them could put could have a vote and put somebody on that they chose the majority. Then, oh, but they have one other choice, and the other choice is that they could, like, for instance, it happened when I was on the board of health, Kate Brothers um, put in a resignation. It had more than four months. The selecting board called us, our board, the board of health, and then we had a vote, and the next person went in. This is basically, I find three things in this that I, the reason why I submitted it. Number one is it would, it would um, not cost, it would be no cost to the town for a special election because it would be um, filled by further verbiage in this article. Second thing is um, it would take out any appearance, and I just, I have to focus on that word appearance, of just political um, appointments. Um, and the third thing is, and I'll give you an example, in Perica, they have this in their bylaw, um, but they have to have 10% of the vote for a person to be elected. Like for instance, if two people ran, and let's just say, and maybe three people ran, but the second person didn't want to, didn't want to take the position, but the third person that got the votes actually only put this, talked to 10 people in the town, and got the name and write in vote. And yet, let's say 3,000 people voted for the town. So the winner got, again, I'm just throwing some numbers out there, but let's say that winner got 1,000 votes. They decide to move out of town the next year, and a person with 10 votes gets in there. This just doesn't make any sense. So there has to be some bar in there, and the bar in all the other towns that I've looked at is 10%. I'm putting the bar up. I'm not this article I'm putting a bar in there twenty five percent. So if that's another reason if the majority would prove in that town meeting that you know they would understand it or probably decide because that that individual had a pretty good amount of uh, representation. So that's that's my um overview of it. I, I mean there's one or two other reasons why I think it's good for um Anyone want, anybody want to hear them, but or if there's any questions for me. Mr. Ferdinand, this is Dave Aznavorian. Uh, has this been reviewed by town council? Uh, the town manager would be the one that would answer that, but I, to even, I would say to even get to the board of selectmen to, uh, review it last week, it would be, um, it would have legal, um, what I would call legal buster. But. Mr. Chairman, uh, it was reviewed by, if I may, it was reviewed by town council. Um, and um, his comments on article 21, I'm just looking at it now. Um, it just it it does it just said it doesn't amend any bylaw or charter, um, and he's just not sure if it can supersede uh, Chapter Forty One, uh, Section Eleven regarding vacancies. Um, that's all he had said. So I'm just not My sure. Second, just I not have sure. a second question: Has this been? Uh, voted on by the uh, Board of Selectmen. I believe the Board of Selectmen took no action on this. 
that's all the questions I have. Thank you. Sorry, I'm having uh, internet problems here. I think I missed the last uh, back and forth. Are we, uh, where are we? Are we asking questions? You, you, we're at questions, Mr. Chairman. Sorry? We're at questions right now. Yeah, okay. So does anybody have any additional questions? Are there any other callers? We have no other callers on the line, Mr. Chairman. Okay. And yeah, Richard, I missed the part. You had just started to talk about town council and I lost you. Yeah, he, you know, he doesn't really try, he doesn't weigh in on private citizen articles to make any corrections uh, or to determine if they're properly written. It just, he just, he's always um, stayed away from doing that, but he just commented that it just doesn't appear to amend any general bylaw in the town um, or the charter itself. Um, and uh, he's not sure if such an article can supersede uh, Mass General Law Chapter 41, Section 11, which deals with vacancies. Okay. Um. And Mr. Chairman, I don't think you heard the second question I had. I asked what action the Board of Selectmen took, and uh, they made no recommendation. Yeah, I was just going to ask that. Okay. Um, so, uh, do we have any other questions? Mr. Chairman, um, this is Mr. Johnson. Just a comment, not really a question, but in my past experience as a member of the Board of Selectmen, I participated in numerous uh, elections in quotation marks to fill vacancies on various boards in the community. Um, and my recollection is that um, Massachusetts general laws was the guiding authority. I think town council in the words of Mr. Montori was referencing the specific statutory citation. Um, and, and we were always in a position in those events to um, be guided by state statute in the execution of the so-called election. Um, so my comment is um, I have some concern about um, adopting or proposing to adopt something locally that may end up in conflict with state law. I think we need some guidance on that point before um, the finance committee were to take any position on this particular article. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Um, how do we want to proceed with the motion here? Mr. Chairman, based on what I've heard uh, about mass uh, election law, I would uh, move to make no recommendation on Article 21. Okay, we have uh, a motion. Second. And a second. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Cook. Aye. Uh, Mr. Christian. Aye. Uh, Ms. Bishop. Aye. Ms. Higgins. Aye. Uh, Mr. Asenvorian. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. So that's unanimous with no recommendation. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ferdinand. And did you have another one? Is he still on the line? Yes, I have. Okay. Um, do you want to talk briefly about Article 22? Yes, Article 22 is a non binding resolution. It's about as self explanatory as. I think I could do, but basically it's saying that we're reaffirming as a town that moving in for all federal, state, and municipal elections to be exclusive by the privilege of United States citizens. And it's an encouragement to non citizens to, to participate, seek and obtain the citizenship through citizen processing. The other, a couple other things that happen in this is that we, as a town, not just one individual, if I was to you know, call my co representative or 
text them or email them or and say that I, you know, support that any of the towns that we live in that you represent, I think you should basically only be able to be a citizen, you know, and vote like that in the future. But we can do that as a town to uh, elect officials both in the state and the U.S. House and Senate. With this, like, with this um, resolution, the last thing I would say, though, is what's going on in our um, state currently um, is Amherst, Massachusetts, and Wayland, Massachusetts, have both passed those um, bills, not just the resolution in the in the town or city. They were in the last um, 190th um, legislature. They were in, in committee, I believe, and they didn't get voted on. But currently, Leland had the back. Boston, Somerville, Cambridge, and Newton now, you know, are talking about doing it if they haven't already. And so I think it's, uh, I'd like to see just upon our behalf that as a town, would you say, you know, before to some of these other towns or cities that would, you know, would not for that um, currently. That's, that's, just a bit. Right, thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Ferman? Or, or manager? Is there anybody else on the phone? Uh, we have no other callers, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Well, I'm getting a lot of noise on somebody's phone. Okay. Um, anybody have any questions? Um, so this is a non-binding, so not quite sure how that works as far as the law. Um, do we have any, uh, any motions? Mr. Chairman, I'd move that uh, the Finance Committee make no recommendation on this article that election laws are our election laws. So. I don't see any benefit of the Finance Committee making a recommendation here. All right, so we have a motion for no recommendation. Second. And a second from Ms. Bishop. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Aye. Uh, Mr. Cook. Aye. Mr. Christian. Aye. Ms. Bishop. Aye. Uh, Ms. Higgins. Aye. Mr. Savorian. Aye. And chair votes aye. No rec uh unanimous no recommendation. Okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I think that completes am I wrong? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that completes the annual town warrant. It does, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um does anybody need a short break? Or do we just plow through? Let's push through, Mr. Chairman. Push through, all right. I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, special Town Warrant, Article 1. Mr. Chairman, this article uh, transfers funds within the fiscal year 2020 budgets to fund um, line items that are projected to have deficits and transferring uh, funds from uh, um, line items that are projected to have surpluses. Um, the, the, uh, just to focus a little bit on the ones that have surpluses, the, the total amount that we're transferring uh, between budgets is $126,274. Town group health insurance, $59,000 is being transferred uh, to surpluses because uh, less people uh, took part in the um, uh, health plans uh, that we projected. $45,730 from property and liability insurance because our premium was less than we uh, projected and we had a greater um, uh, benefit from our uh, credits and um, from, the, from the insurance company. And then uh, the North Shore Agricultural Technical and School District 
I had a surplus of $21,544 because our tuition assessment was less because less students went to the school. Well, the list of items above that we're funding uh, very quickly, our town hall energies, uh, we just exceeded the budget uh, that we had this year for our town hall energy, uh, which is not only the energy uh, and electric uh, and gas for the town hall, it's also for the Senate fire station in the annex. Uh, leases and contracts for $39,000. Uh, the projected deficit is specific because of purchases and improvements we have made in response to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Town hall repairs and maintenance, the $3,119 is specific to a new uh, HVAC unit that was uh, installed at the annex. Computer services, $9,000 is for a new server. Uh, to pay for a portion of a new server uh, that the uh, uh, IT manager is purchasing. The server is $16,000. The other seven will come from his existing budget. Interest on bond in anticipation notes, $10,649 is for interest on short-term bonds we have for our streetlight project. Uh, we anticipate paying that um, bond off over the next few years using our streetlight budget account. But the first year interest um, was not funded within the streetlight uh, budget to share. Town facilities and ground salaries were short this year, $4,657. Facilities and grounds, all other, $14,200 will pay for a mulch uh, to be installed at the uh, Town Hall Annex, Wamasa Park, and Buster Park. Solid waste disposal, uh, $10,000. The cost to dispose of our trash at Covanter and Haverhill. Uh, increased uh, because we saw approximately a 20 to 25% increase in trash during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic when people were home. Um, we just saw an influx of uh, the amount of trash that was disposed in town. Town Medicare tax um, is a function of our uh, payroll and uh, we're short based on what was projected going into the year and the amount of $15,800. And then finally, um, Middlesex Retirement System, $9,849. Uh, funds are needed for the assessment um, of retirement costs for employees who've been, who've been called up for active duty uh, or reserves. Their retirement still needs to be paid, um, and it's an assessment against the town. Uh, there are two uh, such assessments in the special town meeting warrant. This assessment is for fiscal um, 20. The assessment that we'll see later on is for fiscal 19. That's it. All right. Um, do we have, oh, actually, I wanted to, I neglected to thank Mr. Ferdinand for uh, coming on to talk to you about his articles. Um, so thank you for doing that if you're watching at home or YouTube. Um, so do we have anybody for on the phone for article one in the special town um, warrant? No callers, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, any questions from the committee or motions? Move to adopt Article 1. Second. Motion and a second. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Cook. Aye. Mr. Christian. Aye. Mr. Bishop. Aye. Ms. Higgins. Aye. Uh, Mr. Asimorian. Aye. And Chair votes aye. Unanimous. Article 2. Article 2, Mr. Chairman, seeks to reallocate $220,000 from uh, the original appropriation of $815,000 of funds that were transferred from the stabilization fund through an article um, in May of 2017. At the time, the purpose of the article was to fund the uh, demolition of existing bleaches and the installation of uh, new bleaches at Doucette Field. Uh, that project never took place. As we all know, Doucette Field is uh, the site of the new elementary school that's being built. Because um, Doucette Field uh, will be taken away for the new elementary school, uh, we have displaced the um, home of the um, 
Tewksbury High football team um, for both practice practices and games. For the uh, fall of 2020, the football team will move to the uh, high school uh, and play and practice there until um, the new athletic field is complete one year at the new elementary school site. But in order to house the football team at the high school, um, a few things need to be done. The uh, need to purchase uh, temporary locker rooms for the football team um, in order to allow all sports to remain uh, both practicing and have games at the high school. So we're going to need uh, temporary field lights uh, for the field. Uh, we would like to uh, construct a permanent press box at the field, not only to announce games, but to also properly film all sports at the, at the uh, field um, for broadcast on our, our cable television um, channels so people can watch at home. The, uh, the, um, the funds for both the locker rooms and the field lights Will be temporary, but the funds used to uh, fill the press box will be for a permanent structure to be used in the future. Again, for all sports that are playing at the high school, you know, we committed when the elementary school project uh, was approved and being built that if the field was if the field was not ready, which will not be, um, that we will uh, properly uh, relocate and house high school football team and not impact any of the other sports at the uh, high school. Uh, this article allows us to do that. We looked at other options for sports, uh, for fall sports, and after reviewing different options, uh, it really came down to this being the only one we had. Just to jump ahead quickly, the remaining balance of this $850,000 uh, will then, uh, if this is approved, turn back to the stabilization fund. That's it. All right, thank you. Do we have anybody on the phone? No callers, Mr. Chairman. Callers. Any questions from the committee? Uh, just one, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, Richard, are you going to... Uh, Call it a Scrivener's error to uh, replace purchase with rent? Yes, I intend to do that. I have one question there, Mr. Chairman. Through you to the town manager. Were you involved with all the discussions, Richard, on this with the athletic department and so forth? Uh, I was, Tom, yes. Uh, for the benefit of the committee, I, I, I need to ask this question. In the fall programs, girls varsity soccer, girls varsity field hockey, um, as well as the um, boys soccer and boys um, uh, JV and uh, varsity soccer boys. Will they get use of these locker rooms, Mr. Town Manager? The girls? No, uh, Mr. Chairman. No, they won't. This will the, the locker rooms that we're renting will uh, leasing will be specific specifically for the football team. Which are how many members? Fifty four, fifty five members of the football team. Yeah. I'm not sure what that number is, Tom. Okay. Because uh, for the benefit of the, the committee and the design of the new athletic complex at the uh, John Ryan School, we are building out a field house and locker rooms and showers for both sexes. And I'm just wondering why we're not addressing the girls' soccer and field hockey with these uh, temporary locker rooms? My guess, Tom, is they're utilizing the, uh, the locker rooms that are currently at the high school. 
Okay. That's a guess. Yeah, that's that's my best guess. Yeah. <clears throat> I just don't think there's been enough discussion. That's just my personal opinion with the finance committee on this article. But with that said, I'm going to vote in the affirmative. <clears throat> but I just want to remind, I've heard a couple of things said in other meetings with regard to this does not impact the tax rate at all. Well, let me say that the 850000 that was originally taken from the stabilization fund came from a tax rate because it was surplus money. The second thing is the present athletic complex at the high at the new elementary school has a cost associated to removing the existing bleachers which by the way it's our original estimate that was done by the town exceeded that 850,000 that money is now included in the construction budget and with the whole athletic complex, it exceeds $4.3 million. I'm only offering this information because just to be transparent of how we're spending 200 and some odd thousand dollars for just football alone. When I look at the athletic fees that are being charged to all the students, not just the athletic fees, but the parking fees, that I think there should be some contribution to this fund through that avenue. But I will vote in the affirmative on this. But I think, just to be transparent, I think the committee needs to know that information. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, thanks, Mr. Cook. Um, any other questions on Article 2? Hi. Go ahead, Donna. Ms. Higgins. Okay. I just have a quick question, Richard. I I um, sent you an email last week in regards to the butters, and mm -hmm. you had not had an opportunity to catch up with them. And I wanted to know if you've done that since then, because the lights are going to impact them, going against what we've already agreed to with that field. So the plan, Donna, um, is to send the abutters a letter over the next week, informing them of the plan that we are bringing forward and indicating to them that if it passes, then we will have a meeting with them on the field to go through the plan. Okay. Okay, Mr. Johnson, did you have a question? Yes, I did. Um, I just wanted to, um, because this is a public hearing, I wanted to ask the town manager a question that I asked him a week or two ago on this article, and that relates to the fact that the uh, Article 2 is requesting a reallocation of two hundred and twenty thousand dollars. There's language in that the locker rooms are rental locker rooms, but there are also other purposes, um, specifically construction of a press box. So I just want to ask the town manager to uh, delineate the uh, use of the two hundred and twenty thousand. How much is a temporary, you know, short-term expense? versus how much of this cost is something that will benefit the uh, high school facility for the long haul on a permanent basis. Um, sure, and, and I apologize for not mentioning that earlier. The, the uh, rental of the locker rooms is approximately um, $50,000. The rental of the field lights for the uh, fall sports uh, year is Again, approximately fifty thousand dollars. The construction of the press box, um, we uh, are projecting uh, around a hundred thousand dollars, and then uh, twenty thousand dollars for contingency. I'm thinking the press box may end up costing more than uh, the hundred thousand dollars, based on um, some of the early indications that we're, we're uh, discussions we're having. So, roughly half of the project. Uh, will be for a permanent press box that will be there after um, the new athletic complex is built and uh, can be used for the uh, not just the fall sports but the uh, spring sports that take place at the high school level. Again, um, it's not just for broadcasting the sports but also allowing a telemedia department to properly broadcast the um, events uh, on our uh, channels. 
Thank you. Were there any other questions? Uh, are there any motions? Move to adopt Article 2, Mr. Chairman. Motion to adopt. Second. And a second, Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Cook. Aye. Mr. Christian. Aye. Uh, Ms. Bishop. Aye. Ms. Higgins. Aye. Mr. Asnavorian. Aye. Chair votes aye. Unanimous. Article 3 is the second half of this, I believe. Correct, Mr. Chairman. This uh, takes the remaining $630,000 and returns it to the stabilization fund. Okay. Uh, is there anybody on the phone for Article 3? No callers, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, any questions regarding Article 3 in the committee? I'll offer a motion to recommend adoption, Mr. Chairman. Get a motion for adoption. Second. And a second, Mr. Johnson. Aye. Uh, Mr. Cook. Aye. Mr. Christian. Aye. Ms. Bishop. Aye. Uh, Ms. Higgins. Aye. Mr. Asnavorian. Aye. Chair votes aye. Unanimous. Uh, Article 4. Article 4, Mr. Chairman, uh, uses uh, transfers $373,604 from uh, free cash to fund uh, the uh, DPW snow and ice budget deficit for FY20. At the beginning of the fiscal year, we set aside $600,000 in free cash to be used for a possible snow and ice deficit. Uh, this year, we uh, needed $373,604 of that amount to fund a uh, deficit in salaries and operating for uh, the uh, FY20 uh, snow season. Okay. Um, anybody on the phone for Article 4? No callers, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Anybody have any questions from the committee? Are there any motions? Mr. Chairman, um, before you call for motion, I do have a question. I just want to ask uh, through you to the town manager. I, I want to make sure I understood stood his explanation correctly. Is this three hundred and seventy three six hundred and four dollars, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Montori, um, over and above the six hundred thousand, or in place of the six hundred thousand? It's, it's it's in place of the 600. It's, so we're using the 600, we're using this amount from the 600 to fund the snow and ice deficit. It's not above the 600. Good, thank you. I thought that's what you said. I just wanted to make sure I understood clearly. Yeah, no, I might have said that wrong, I apologize. Any other questions? Or I can entertain a motion. I'll move to recommend adoption. Motion. Second. And a second, Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Cook. Aye. Mr. Christian. Aye. Mr. Bishop. Aye. Ms. Higgins. Aye. Mr. Asnavorian. Aye. And Chair Votai as well. You know us. Uh, Article 5. Article 5, Mr. Chairman, uh, use, utilizes the remaining balance of our free cash in the amount of $226,396 for the following uh, purchases. The first is a uh, fire department uh, administrative car for the uh, deputy fire chief. Um, this replaces, um, this, this will allow his car to be moved to uh, fire prevention. Uh, which currently is utilizing a vehicle that did not pass inspection. Uh, it's an old cruiser. Um, the, uh, again, the amount uh, of this uh, purchase is $45,000. It was part of the uh, fire department's five-year capital plan. Uh, it was just one of the items that we were going through the capital budget to determine what could be postponed and what needed to be done. 
this was just brought forward as an item that we needed to purchase uh, because of the uh, car not passing uh, inspection. Uh, the next uh, was a part of the um, five-year plan uh, for the uh, facilities and grounds department. Uh, we are seeking $26,736 to resurface uh, basketball and tennis courts at the Livingston uh, Street uh, Recreation Complex. Um, these uh, courts uh, are in need of resurfacing to make them safe um, and to uh, properly stripe the courts for not only tennis, but pickleball and basketball. Um, we're anticipating that the uh, recreation complex is going to be heavily used uh, this summer. And it's just uh, a project that uh, we'd like to undertake. The actual cost of the project is uh, $36,000. The remaining balance will come from the recreation development fund. The next item is $44,000 for the upgrade of an assessor software. Currently, they're at using a Vision 6.5, which is the software they have for um, their um, property uh, uh, database. Um, the uh, new software is a version 8.0, uh, and we need to upgrade because the current version will not be supported anymore with the Vision. And then finally, we're seeking $110,660 to design and engineer the traffic lights at Pleasant Street and Main Street intersection. Uh, this project is something that um, we would like to get designed and have ready in case any state or federal funds become available that we can immediately apply for the funding uh, and be what they call shovel ready for these type projects. Uh, the same intersection is going to be heavily um, used, obviously, when the new elementary school was built, and we'd like to see the improvements take place. Uh, and we're confident that we can get state funding or federal funding, but we need to, um, but we need to have the design ready. And that's the full utilization of the remaining free cash. All right, thank you. Um, do we have anybody on the phone for Article Five? No callers, Mr. Chairman. Callers, any questions from the committee? Do you have any motions for Article 5? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Motion from Mr. Cook. Second. And a second. Mr. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Cook? Aye. Uh, Mr. Christian? Aye. Uh, Ms. Bishop? Aye. Higgins? Aye. Mr. Aye. And Chair votes aye. Unanimous. Uh, recommend adoption. Article 6. Article 6, Mr. Chairman, is seeking the transfer of $7,962.41 from town property liability insurance to pay for um, a previous year. A uh, previous year's bill for the assessment for Middlesex retirement for employees who have been called up uh, for um, active duty or reserves. This was the second part that I uh, of, a, of a discussion we had on our from Article One. Yep. Uh, do we have anybody on the phone for Article Six? No callers, Mr. Chairman. No callers. Uh, any questions from the committee? Have any motions? So moved. Second. Motion to recommend adoption. And a second. Mr. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Cook? Aye. Mr. Christian? Aye. Ms. Bishop? Aye. Ms. Higgins? Aye. Mr. Azamburian? Aye. Chair votes aye. Unanimous vote. All right, I think that brings us to the end of the Warren articles. Um, before closing, oh, let, anybody else on the phone last check? No callers, Mr. Chairman. Callers, all right. Um, I'll move we close say, the hearing. Yeah, I was going to say before closing, thanks to Mr. Hardiman and Mr. <laughs> Gilbert, uh, Chief Hazel, and, um, and Mrs. Graffio, um, for hanging out with us. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, thanks. Okay, good. Um, I'll second the motion. Has a motion, Dave. <clears throat>
Mr. Azavorian has a second. Uh, Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Cook. Aye. Mr. Christian. Aye. Ms. Bishop. Aye. Uh, Ms. Aye. Mr. Azavorian. Aye. And chair votes aye. The public hearing is closed. Um, we still have uh, another agenda item, but public hearing is closed. Okay, um, we have a couple of transfers. I think I have them over here somewhere. Oh, what happened? Okay, um, this one actually doesn't have a request number and I didn't look it up in the spreadsheet. Somebody know what this one is? I'll look it up. All right, so we have, uh, this is number 60. It's uh, a lateral transfer in the amount of $10,000 from police energy utilities to police all other supplies. Does anybody have any questions? Just one, Mr. Chairman, to the town manager. Uh, Richard, I'm assuming these expenses can be covered or get reimbursed under the COVID-19 money? Uh, yes, in fact, uh, we um, I met with um, um, DPW today, and uh, they're uh, working on the reimbursement request um, to both FEMA and for the CARES Act, and these have been included. Excellent. That's my only question. Anybody else have any other questions? I had look for a motion. Move to adopt. Second. Motion and a second. Mr. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Cook? Not voting. Mr. Christian? Aye. Uh, Ms. Bishop? Aye. Ms. Higgins? Aye. Mr. Azavorian? Aye. And Chair votes aye. Unanimous. Uh, sorry, six zero one not voting. Um, Mr. Chairman, may I just um, ask through you to a question to the town manager? Sure, please. If you don't mind, uh, Richard, and and no need to answer this tonight, but maybe the you can follow up at a later date. Um, specifically, do you have a running tally of the COVID-related expenses uh, to date? And um, when you have that number, can you share that with the committee? I can actually give it to you now. Uh, we're going to be seeking reimbursement for um, approximately one hundred and fifty-five thousand um, dollars, and it's either going to be reimbursed by FEMA or by the CARES Act or by both. And we'll be submitting that on Friday. Uh, we received an additional um, approximately forty thousand dollars at the beginning of the pandemic that we've used um, approximately twenty-four of it or twenty-five of it to fund uh, the part-time nurse to be full-time. Those have been the expenses to date. And that 155 that you mentioned, does that include this 10,000? That includes not only this 10,000, but if the, um, at the spe in the special town meeting, the money that uh, we're appropriating, 39,000, it includes that. It includes uh, other expenses for personal protection um, equipment cleaning of buildings, purchasing of equipment um, over time, um, and it's both for the town and the school. Thank you. Okay. Um, this next transfer is number 61. Um, very similar, lateral transfer 10,000 from police energy utilities to police maintenance supplies for similar reasons. 
Any questions? We'll move to approve, Mr. Chairman. Motion. Second. And a second. Uh, Mr. Johnson. Aye. Uh, Mr. Cook. Not voting. Not voting. Mr. Christian. Aye. Uh, Ms. Bishop. Aye. Ms. Higgins. Aye. Uh, Mr. Azavorian. Aye. Chair votes aye. Uh, six, one, or six, oh, one not voting. <clears throat> okay, uh, that wraps up the transfer part of the program. Uh, does anybody have anything else? I think our next meeting is uh, before the annual town meeting. Um, and I'm meeting with uh, Richard tomorrow to go over sort of logistics. Anybody have anything else? If not, maybe this is the last motion. Move to adjourn. Second. And a second by Mr. Cook. Mr. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Cook? Aye. Mr. Christian? Aye. Uh, Ms. Bishop? Aye. Ms. Higgins? Aye. Uh, Mr. Azamorian? Aye. Chair votes aye. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Good job, Mr. Chairman. Well done. Very good job. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Have a good night.